This video is designed to help you prepare your input for use with the Glyce spec tool on glycam.org. The goal is to cover the tool's requirements so that when you use the tool, you can know that your input files are ready and properly formatted. In order to use the Glyce spec tool, you will need a PDB file with a protein and a bound oligosaccharide that represents the minimal binding determinant, or MBD, of your glycan. In your PDB file, make sure that the protein is contained in the atom section and that the glycan is contained in the head atom section. The glycan portion of the PDB file sh should only contain atoms that are in the MBD. If you are unsure of what exactly makes up your MBD, it is okay to guess, and use the tool to validate your guess. You should, however, do your best to make sure that the glycan does contain the whole MBD. Be sure to remove any duplicate copies of the oligosaccharide, all residue numbers must be unique, and you may also provide a list of known binders for comparison. As we mentioned, you will need a PDB file that contains an oligosaccharide and complex with a protein. The tool uses co-complex and a grafting algorithm to predict which glycans in a given library will bind with the protein. Now let's take a closer look at a PDB file's actual content. The Glyspec tool follows the PDB standard, where the protein belongs in the atom section and the glycans MBD belongs in the head atom section. Ideally, you will want to omit any part of the glycan that is not a part of the MBD. Failing to do this can cause the tool to generate poor results, but there are cases where that is actually useful. One way to use the Glyspec tool is to try to validate a hypothetical MBD, but we'll talk about that in a minute. While you want to omit anything outside of the MBD, you want to include the whole MBD. Missing residues are common for various reasons, but it is usually possible to make a reasonable guess regarding where the residue should be placed. Earlier, we mentioned that the Glyspec tool can be used to validate a hypothetical MBD. If you are unsure whether you have chosen the correct MBD, go ahead and make an educated guess. Then use the tool and compare the predicted binders and non-binders to your experimental data. A high level of agreement provides good validation for your guess. It's common to find duplications of various sorts in crystal structures. All duplicates must be removed. Though it may change in the future, it is currently a requirement that each residue must be assigned a unique number. Often, you will have a list of glycans that you know to be binders based on glycan array screening. Uploading a list of these known binders to the Glyspec tool can allow you to assess how accurate the tool's predictions are. This feature is particularly useful for testing the correctness of a hypothetical MBD. This step is optional. It is fine to skip this step if you just want to see which glycans the tool predicts will bind. If you do want to upload a list of known binders, simply create a text file with one glycan ID per line. These IDs must match the IDs in the glycan array you select. For example, if you select CFG version 5.0 in the configuration step, use the glycan IDs from that array. In summary, when preparing data for the Glyspec tool, you will need a PDB file with the protein and MBD in complex. Make sure that your protein is in the atom section and the glycan is in the head atom section. Your glycan should contain the whole MBD, but only the MBD. If you are unsure of the MBD, it is okay to guess and use your results to assess your guess. Check for and remove any duplicate molecules or residues. Make sure all residue IDs are unique, and finally, if you have one, you may want to upload a simple text file with a list of known binders. Now that you know how to prepare your input for the Glyspec tool, the next step is to learn how to run the Glyspec tool.